Okay, here we have a Nissan T31 X-Trail, Australian right-hand drive version with a problem with the heater cable. It's not going all the way to the right or to the left, so there's something wrong with the cable. And in here you can see the mechanism, how it works. But this particular cable is fine on this side. This one is also cable driven, but the one in the middle is electric. While I'm here, I had to pull out the glove box. There's a number of screws involved. One, uh, two, three, four, the two for the latch, and so that's five, six, seven, eight are underneath the actual, uh, you get in underneath the glove box there. And this is to get to your air filter. And then once you're at your air filter, uh, there's a little latch just under there. Just unlatch it. And there's your air filter. You can pull it out and replace it. But I've noticed the one I bought from Repco was slightly too big this way to go in there. So I don't know why. It's the right one, but they seem to have made them oversized. So I had to kind of squash it in a little bit. Be very careful or you'll bend the whole thing. So just kind of try and maybe even lube each side and try and slide it in there as best you can. And then just push it in right at the end to squash it in. Let's put that back on. That just should clip back in there. Like so. So that's how to replace the air filter. Um, here's the glove box. As I said, two. So there's the glove box. Two holes underneath. And just a word of warning. So you don't damage, so you don't damage that bit there. Don't pull on the door at all. Hold on. This door here and that little bit there and there, they will break or come out easily. So don't pull on that. Rather pull on this little bit here to yank it out. And on the edge here, you can pull on that too to pull it out. It's got clips there. Oh. Clips there and there. And on this side, there's no clips, so it'll just pull out. They just kind of like lock in little tabs. The screw holes inside are there, those two, and that slides on that metal piece. You have to push it, slide it in, push it up into this hole and slide it on, and then screw, make sure it's attached to the two pieces of plastic, not just this one, and then that sort of screws them in and holds them together. Another hole there. And a hole there, hole there, and a hole there for the screws, and that's it. Okay, as I say, don't yank on the door itself. <clears throat> right, that's how you do the air filter, but my main problem today is actually this cable, which is why I've had to pull this all apart. I got a bit carried away and ended up trying to pull the whole lot apart. Now, as it turns out, to get this bit out, you've got to get this bit out to get. So, yeah, so don't even bother. Don't even try pulling this out. It's too hard. So I've just got to figure out what's causing my problem here. So there's my cable causing my problem. But as I say, on this end, it seems okay. Cable's all intact, but on this end, 
Now, you can see actually two ends of the cable, so when I turn this right knob here, that's, that's this one here. Yeah. And that's to change which vent the air is coming out of. And I turn this left knob, that's the one at the bottom there. And that is my problem today. So I don't actually know what's wrong with it, so I'm going to try pulling out a few screws. Um, it actually looks a bit loose. I don't know. It's been jamming up a little for a while, but my son decided to really yank it and uh, that wrecked it. Actually, maybe this, this bit of the cable might be bent here and I might be able to just bend that back into shape and that might fix my problem. Yeah, that might be it. Give that a go, see what happens. Okay, so I've just popped that cable off. There's, it just You just squeeze these bits of plastic together and the cable pops off. Now, what I've noticed is that the cable itself moves freely all the way. So that's all good. But when you put it all the way in like that, it doesn't align with where the plastic sits. See how the plastic is further back? Now, why did it bend? So I'm gonna push this and it is quite stiff to move that back and forward, especially coming back this way. It gets a bit jammed just about there. <laughs> so, how do you lube that up and fix it? I've got no idea, so I'm about to try and find out. So I've unscrewed that black plastic bit. It turns out that that's, that just, hang on, that just pivots there. It's not connected to anything inside and the screw is just a regular screw. So what it's doing is moving this bit here. So this is our offending bit in here that needs to be loosened up a bit, somehow lubed. So I'll take the screw off here, pull this cable out the way, see if I can get into that area at all to lube it up. Good news, I've found the problem. How am I going to show it to you? Let's see. Do you see this little bit of plastic just here? I can put my fingernail on it. When this is turning, it is getting stuck. That didn't that time, but uh, it gets jammed there. See that? So, that seems to be a problem. Well, whether it's the main problem or not, I don't know. Okay, so what I've done is, I have just moved, unscrewed this, just moved this slightly, because clearly that bit of plastic that I was pointing out actually needs to be lining up with this groove as it turns here. So now you can see it lines up and no resistance. So I think what's happened at some point is that this has jumped a cog and caused this little bit of plastic here to hit the black plastic here when it should have gone into this groove here. So by realigning this, that should fix our problem. Yay. Now I just need to uh, bend this cable back to the right shape so that when this is all the way here and this is all the way here. Oh, sorry. This is all the way the other way. And this is all the way here. 
and uh, reattached of course with that screw then this hole will line up with this plastic holder okay so I've reattached that cable in place there and I've decided to work from the cold end rather than the hot end which pushes that cable out because you really want it to make sure that it closes on cold properly so as you can see this is this is on um, this is pushed all the way out to cold so that's the cold setting and this doesn't line up now with the black plastic so I need to twist this around back into you can see that once that was part of that loop so I'm gonna have to twist that around with some needle nose pliers like so Just hope that that'll go back onto that plastic once it's done. The other option, of course, is to try and push this whole cable back a bit. Um, now, how you do that, I'm not sure, because it looks like it's crimped there. That might be almost impossible. So really, we've got to work with this idea. So I just need to twist this around a little bit more <clears throat> before it'll actually start to connect, or be in the right position anyway. It's almost there. Buggering it up completely because I am twisting this cable a bit. So the possibility is that the cable has stretched a bit. Nearly there. And probably what I need to do is just put a little bend in the cable. Figure this out for yourself how it works best for you okay so I've added some twists to this the thing I'm worried about of course is because this cable now is not pushing into the center of this black thing uh, that it might just decide to push and bend that metal out if there's too much resistance but now I've just got to try and get that back onto that black bit of plastic there and uh, yeah, hope it'll go on. But I haven't made the loop too tight. All right, oh, I need two hands. Okay, so it's not the outcome I was looking for, but it's it's working anyway. Um, I had to twist that a couple of times, well, just a bit to make the cable a bit shorter, because I think it might have slipped here. Uh, made the cable a bit shorter then had to bend it down a little bit so that it, this is pulling and pushing mainly pushing on the center of this black plastic bit so that it's not pushing over and just you know pushing the cable um, this every time I turn the knob it wants to push that black thing especially going back this way it wants to push this out and then jump these teeth here because this is still too stiff really so um, to try and create less flex in this I end up putting a bigger washer here um, and a, a different type of screw because that's sitting on nylon I can leave that a little bit loose so that there's no friction here and now what I have is a rather rubbery feeling knob that doesn't 
still very stiff to turn, very flexy, but it works. And coming back this way, that's now fully closed. It doesn't go all the way. I wanted it to be able to just stop there. Well, I didn't want it to, but it stops there, which means at least if I go all the way, I know it's actually closed. As in, there's no, no more left of this to go. It's fully closed. Um, part of the reason there's so much flex is because this here is flexing as the cable goes, flexing back and forward, um, and there's a little bit of flex in there too. There's flex everywhere, it's horrible, it's a bad design. But anyway, it will open most of the way, and most importantly, close all of the way too, so that's good. Problems about as fixed as it's going to get. So there it is. Okay, so I've just discovered that you can pop that little cog off. There he is. These little bit there. It's been causing us problems. But uh, what I'm wondering now is, can I get some lube in there and lube that up, or is it sealed? I'm gonna try getting some silicon spray in there with a little straw. See whether that makes any difference. It's a long shot. Pretty sure it's not gonna make much difference. Spraying that little seal as well. It doesn't feel that stiff now. Like that's quite easy to turn with that, but very different turning it with a screwdriver to turning it with the actual mechanism that we've got. Well, you never know, might make a difference. I'll put it all back together, see what happens. All right, so I've put it all back together and it's marginally better. Get that bit of lube. Certainly seems to be flying better. But there's still so much flex in there, I just don't know why this thing flexes so much, causing this to flex so much. Yeah, really not great. I probably could try and lengthen that cable back out again so that goes all the way to the bottom, but I'm not gonna bother. Um, you know, once it's once the heat is open, like say by that much, that's enough. There's plenty of heat coming through. And yeah, that, at least I know that's all the way shut, even though it doesn't hit all the way to the bottom now. It is all the way shut, as in it won't move any further. So, yeah, there it is. That's my solution. It's as good as it's getting. I just hope this doesn't flex a heap or get jammed it's for some unforeseen reason, but right now, that lube seems to have got in there and done its job. So I'm happy about that. Okay, putting it back together now. I have this piece of hosing here and that will sit in there. Need a bit of convincing, I'll get back to you. So that little hose there, that black one, just slots onto there, and at the bottom here it goes into there, and there's only two screws holding the whole thing. That one and that one. Alright, so that's that black bit, and then there is this smaller hose, and that will fit. Um, it needs to go down onto that thing there, this end, like that, and then we'll screw into there. See how it slots in like that? There we go. And I just need to add a screw there. So be aware when you come to do your air filter, 
your cabin filter, that the cabin filter is actually hiding behind that black hose just there. So if it's really frustrating you to get to it, it's quite easy just to take that screw off and pull this little hose off here, which just clips into there like that, and that'll just pull off. And then uh, two more screws will take this black plastic thing out here, this one, and then you can get much easier access to it. I wish I'd known that last time I was trying to replace that cabin filter, because it really is quite easy to get to those three screws. Now I'm just gonna put the glove box back in. Very hard to do this one-handed. <clears throat> that just slots in. So actually before I do that, I probably should get this bit of plastic, dash plastic back together. Now there was no screws holding this particular one in, so that just pushes back into the dashboard. Basically, there's just these little push, these little things holding it in there and there. Oh, and there was a screw there, sorry. Or well, something screws into that. I can't remember now. And I'm going to push that back in. Oh, yes, and there is a screw on the other side as well. Uh, so this is on the right side of the dash panel. There's a screw there. And just to really throw you, that screw is... A, one of these star star head type screws right it's a number mm, T20 just so you know I don't know why it just randomly one screw on that side is a T20 star so I need to get this back in. So here I was telling you there's no screws holding this panel in, but in fact there's four. One, two, three, and that star screw for there. I think that's where the star screw was. Or maybe, yeah, no, that was it. And to get to that, You've got to pull the side panel off and this panel. But this panel here, under um, the steering wheel, that just pops off. It's just a number of clips. There, there, there's one there, down there. So yeah, oh, there is one screw holding it in, and that is a uh, one, oh, that might be the star screw under there where the cable is. There's one screw there, it sits there. Come on, focus. Yep. Right. Now, when putting your glove box back in, this is your tricky bit just here, because you've got to get this bit of plastic to sit behind this bit of plastic. So what you need is like a plastic knife <clears throat> to push this bit back, this bit so that this bit can get underneath it while you're pushing in these clips here and here. And these clips on this side are not really clips, they'll just slide in easily. So just to illustrate that point, here I've got a little plastic wedge, which is just pushing back that bit of plastic while I shove this in. Right, for this panel to go back in this kick panel here there's no screws what there is is a little piece there that needs to clip on or well, not clip on probably just sit on um, that piece of metal there all right so that slips into that slot and this bit will hold it on and then there's just a couple of push things here that you push in 
to the slots where they go which I think is that one and that one so yeah when removing that <clears throat> um, you just get your fingers underneath and just pull it out and it'll come right out but just just from this end pull it out this way and then slide it out that way okay so I put the glove box back in um, screws one two three four and there's a couple under there five and six that I haven't done yet but what I'm going to do next is put this guy back in so that the glove box can lock so it goes this way now there's another piece of oh, now there's another piece of plastic there that it needs to slot over to join this bit of plastic from the glove box to this bit of plastic from the dash that holds it all together and that's why you have to take this piece out um, when you're taking the glove box out otherwise you will not get it out and it just slides on like so put your two screws in and the glove box will lock okay there it is just to reiterate when you're pulling that glove box out don't yank on that don't yank on that yank on that and here pop that out there probably even from underneath um, but only once you got all the screws out all right okay now I'll put the driver side back together um, got my kick panel which uh, is just four clips there um, <clears throat> and this bit under here which as I think I said before only has one screw which sits uh, under under there there he is and I think he's the hex head screw or like the star star head screw goes under there so no I think actually the star head screw goes in here now why there is a star head screw it's anybody's guess I've got no idea I can't remember whether it went in here or in the other one, but you'll have somewhere you will encounter a star head screw. Just so you know. I didn't need to pull all this off. But anyway. Oh, by the way, there's your fuses. And there is a little, you know, area to get to that, so that's easy. Okay, um, this will just pop back in with some clips one down there, a couple there, uh, a few over here, and the screw. So I'm just going to pop that back in now, see if I can do it with the camera on. Just sits up like that, and then push it, just push in. I haven't actually put this one back in before, Ooh. but I think possibly that plastic problem might an issue again all right there it is that was a bit of mucking around but anyway uh one word of caution just behind here uh, there was no problem with this gap here so that was all right but just behind there there's a little white um female clip that comes in sits in this bit behind when you try and push this in to it it likes to pop out and then fall down down in here so um yeah Mine's now as a result just kind of sitting there, but fortunately there's another clip there that's holding it in This was also loose, but fortunately there is a screw under there that holds it in so this side all clipped in nicely That white little clip was only in that one spot there, but I think that'll hold so it shouldn't be a problem But if you Don't have to lose it then don't right. I'm gonna put that little side kick panel back That should just push in Slot in the front there. Mats, mats in the way. So that just needs those clips there, slot into those holes there, and these two here to slot into there and there. Yeah, 
not much holding that on, but anyway. And then trying to take this off, that just clips in, so I can just push that back in, and that's done. That's very easy to get off if ever you have to. You just basically yank it up and out. Right now, I need to put the radio back and this thing back as well. So these slot into those holes. Don't know why it's been difficult, but anyway, it's just like that. You need two two screws there. There, and then two screws on that side. There and there. Something's interfering with its positioning, so I'll fix that up now. Okay, that's back in. Um, I found that these here, um, they you have to pull this firmly towards you until that clips in. You get like a click and a click, and they will, they will click in, and then you can put your screws in for that. Check that's all working, and yep, it's working. That's working, all good. Okay, so next step is to reinstall my radio. And my battery's going flat, so there's no flash to be able to see what I'm doing properly. But I've got my light on here, so you can see all that there. These are the cables that need to plug back in to our radio. There it is, it all comes out as one piece. Uh, there's only four screws holding that in. One, two, three, four. Very easy to take out a radio. Uh, the connectors at the back all have like a little push um, clip that you need to push with your fingernail or a screwdriver and they'll pop right out. And they're all shaped differently so they'll go back in where they're supposed to go. Okay, so I've pushed all the connectors into the back. And I've left this one at the front because that plugs into this dash panel for your hazards. All right, so, and this radio can just hang on these little um, bits here so that you can then screw it in with those one, two, three, and four screws. Okay, um, radio is screwed back in. And I'm just now going to connect up the dashboard center console thing. Mine's got a little camera on top, but um, I'm just going to plug plug that in. Um, and now to connect this in is just one, two, uh, three, four clips. There's no screws with this thing. So to get it out, you literally just pry it out with your fingers each side on this behind these silver bits and it'll pop out. Uh, you're going to try and get these two out at the top and these two out in the center. And don't worry about the bottom ones, it's more these center ones. Just be aware when pulling this panel out that it's got these funny shaped plastic bits here um, that will want to stop you from pulling it out all the way. All right, so you have to lift it to get it out all the way, it's actually stopping me now. You gotta sort of jiggle it up and down, there it is. So you gotta sort of put the whole panel in like that, I think. <clears throat> jiggle it up and down until it wants to sit in there. And just push it in. Okay, there we go, lovely. And as I, said, as I said, to get it out, it's just the reverse. Your fingers behind in there, and at the top, and just yank it out. So there it is, dashboard all back together again. Kick panels and everything. And uh, if you like this video and you found it useful, please uh, leave a like or a comment. Thank you. I left out a couple of screws. So actually, there's three screws each side of that panel there. So 
I had to pull this off again to get them back in. And actually the easiest way to get this off is to put your fingers in like that and there and yank it out from the top first and then work your way down.